Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. Today is March 27th, 2024, and this is Ben and Barry on Football. Hello out there, everybody. This is Ben Dickerson. I am your co-host. Getting closer and closer to the NFL draft. The owners' meetings are going on this week, Baron. I'm sure you've been uh, tuned into that with uh, the rule changes and what have you. We'll talk a little bit about that in the uh, second portion of the show where we go through our social media and hit on the uh, current events and hot topics. Yeah, for sure. There's some things popping in the NFL. We, You know, it's funny, Ben. We stay as busy or almost as busy in the offseason as we do in the season. Absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, in the season, we're driven by that schedule. And we'll talk a little bit about that schedule, too, because, um, you know, we, we normally record on Wednesdays, publish it on Thursdays. They have already announced this. This is pretty much going to be a NFL game every day of the week at some point during the schedule. <laughs> so it will be Tuesdays and Mondays and Wednesdays. No, nah, there won't Tuesday be no games on the game. no Tuesdays. Shoot, they got two Christmas Day, which is a Wednesday. That's a Wednesday, but not a Tuesday. I challenge them to have a football game on a Tuesday. It's not going to happen. The schedule. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's what was reported today on the NFL channel. That's not every day happen. of the week during the season. At some point in the season, there's a game. I, I'll believe it when I hear it. All right. We shall see. We shall see. Well, Ben, you mentioned um, the, uh, the draft, and we both – took a close look at the combine. We talked about some of the guys, and especially like with the, uh, the quarterbacks and all of that kind of stuff, you know, at the combine or at the pro days. But every once in a while, you'd see a kid out there and you'd hear a name and it sounded familiar. <laughs> and you'd be like, hey, you know, that's Marvin Harrison's son. <laughs> we talked about him, as a matter of fact, a few times. You know, I remember question. I'm like, he's taller than his dad. You're like, yeah, <laughs> he's big, taller than his dad. So I decided to take a look at um, the names of some of the kids that were in the combine that are being the draft, whose parents are ex NFLers. You know, uh, I don't think there's any with active NFLers to be quite honest, unless Terrell Owens. Uh, I don't think Terrell Owens has a kid there. Um, I think he's. I think he's finally decided he doesn't want to come back anymore. Yeah, that's all he was saying. Unless he he comes back, somebody calls him. You know, Trout, we need you. <laughs> you Johnny on the spot, I'm sure. So let's take a look, Benny, at some of the names of kids who have that NFL bloodline going for. Okay, Ben. So the first guy I want to talk about. Is a name I know you know, former Eagle, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson. Um, Says either he's a junior, six foot two, 28, 31 and a half inch arms, nine and a quarter inch hands. He's got a prospect grade of 6.29, which says he will eventually be an average starter, <laughs> according to the, the grading format that they have here. So, He's got a, a production score of 86, which is pretty high. Um, an athleticism score of 63. Okay, his combine, uh, let's see, a linebacker ranking is 21st. So his total score is 76, which ranks him six in the combine overall, as far as the combine score is concerned. So. His father, Jeremiah Trotter, uh, big time eagle. Um, I wouldn't say Hall of Famer, would you? Jeremiah Trotter? Yeah. No. No, I wouldn't say that. Some some people would some people would argue, but I don't think he has the numbers. Yeah, I, I didn't think so either. So that's Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Next up, Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. Also says he's a junior. 6'9", 321. <laughs> Somebody got fed well. 34 and a quarter inch arms, 10 inch hands. 
6.49 will become a good starter within two years based on that prospect grade. 85 production score, 85 athleticism score. And remember, Trotter was 69. And so he has a total score of 87, which made him first in the offensive tackle, tackle rankings. So Joe Alt. Now, Joe Alt's uh, father, you remember him? I can't remember who he played for, but he was an offensive lineman under that. Exactly. You know, you got to be careful with these with these so-called grades. Okay. <laughs> these guys almost the early draft pick guys almost always uh out outproduced their their grades. And um I mean, let's face it, if the eight is a perfect prospect, there's no perfect prospects. Okay. So seven point three to seven point five is perennial all pro who can decide that before the kid even plays one NFL down. So nobody will ever get that grade. 7.0 to 7.1 is a pro bowl talent. Again, nobody's going to predict that ahead of time and have egg on their face if it doesn't happen. So the best you can probably get is somewhere between 6.7 and 6.9, which is year one starter. Other than that, everybody's going to be under that. Everybody. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, I don't question that at all. Uh, but this is our guy Lance Zerling, which we said we liked him. We said that uh, absolutely, as, absolutely. As an analyst, he, we, absolutely he was good. He's, so, unfortunately, the pros these guys are extremely, extremely thorough. Extremely thorough. But he doesn't have a crystal ball. He's not, you know what I mean? So he's just being extremely thorough. And he'd rather be wrong on the low end than on the high end. All right. Well, let's let's finish. Let's keep moving then. For instance, and, and believe me, I don't make money like this, like Lance Zerline does doing this. But if you remember, which you probably maybe don't, Last week when I did my mock draft 1.0, I said Alt was going to be a day one starter. Okay. I said that. All right. So, well, you're about there. You're about in agreement. About in agreement. Um, Jordan Whittenham, his father also played in the NFL. Um, he's graded at 5.67. He's got as much lower production score, 52. Athleticism score, 72, which is pretty good. His total score, however, being 59. Ranked him 38th coming out of the uh, combine. 6'1", 205, a uh, wide receiver. Jordan Whittenham. Do you have a chance to uh, see anything from him? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. But he's there. He's got a combine score. And all that kind of good stuff. Okay. He'll probably end up with UDFA after his name. Undrafted free agent, eh? Correct. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. And that's one of the If that happens, I actually wanted to kind of look at this stuff because, I mean, let's face it, not everybody, you know, especially the ones whose fathers are superstars. You know, it's, you know, super Hall of Famers and all of that kind of stuff. I will say this much after, you know, looking it up. Um... Arthur Lee Whittenham, Winnington rather, uh, was a uh, he was a running back for the Raiders and the Bills, and um, for the USFL Oakland Invaders. So um, he had a he had a, a career as a running back. Came out of Texas, went to Southern Methodist. So uh, yeah, his son is getting is getting his shot. Jordan Whittenham as a wide receiver. Chris Jenkins has a score of 6.3, which is not bad, Benny. Will eventually be a, what's that say, plus starter out of Michigan, also a junior, 6'3", 299, 34-inch arms, 9 and 3 eighth inch hands. He's a defensive tackle. Production score is 68. It's a little low. Um, However, he's ranked six coming out of the combine for D -tack tackles. Athleticism score is pretty high, 83, and a total score of 75. 
So Chris Jenkins um, is coming out. Christopher Rudy Charles Jenkins, defensive tackle for the Panthers and the Jets. Played football for the Mar Maryland Terrapins. Selected by the Panthers in the second round of the 2001 draft. Two-time All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowl selection. Played seven seasons with the Panthers. Defensive tackle. So that's one of those things where, where, where Junior's got some, some big shoes to fill there, for sure. Do you remember him? Yes. Do you? I, I think I you. think uh I think Jenkins will, could possibly be a day two pick, second or third round. Trotter's Trotter's a second rounder for sure. Alt's a first rounder for sure. Marvin Harrison Jr. Now six point eight three. Uh says, you know, some Philadelphia. He's a Philly guy. Okay. He went to Roman. Went to Roman. Marvin Harrison went to Roman. His son went to St. Joe Prep. Okay, there you go. See? See? Wide receiver, 6'3", 209, 31 and 7, 8-inch arms, 9.5-inch hands. Year one starter, he's projected at with a 94 production score, ranking him second among wide receivers. Right. So remember what I said. The highest rank anybody you'll see out here is, is going to fall in that year one starter. Okay. Who will be the, first, Benny? He's the top athlete. In this draft, well, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking wide receiver. Who's a wide receiver ahead of him? Nobody. He's second. <laughs> oh, in the combine? That's what it says. Combine, he didn't do the combine. He didn't do the second. He finished second with a combine grade in a combine that he didn't even participate in. He didn't even in. play. That's right. That's <laughs> how good he, he is. Participating. <laughs> That's how good he is. A 69 athleticism score. And an 87 total score. So Marvin Harrison Jr., no doubt about it. Frank Gore Jr., <laughs> prospect grade 5.67, a candidate for the bottom of the roster or the practice squad. Coming out of Miami, he's a senior, 5'9", 201, 29 and 5'8", inch arms, 8 and 1 quarter inch hands. Production score of 62, athleticism score of 69, total score of 69, which ranked him 18th among running backs at the combine. So we all know Frank Gore Jr. as a Niner fan. You know, I, I was privy to watching him play. Um, and then he's turned into a guy who's has one of the longest careers in NFL history. I mean, he really got a lot of playing time. So Frank Gore Jr., Best of luck to him. Some team out there believes in bloodlines and believes in uh, possibly this guy having the same kind of longevity uh, and somewhere in, anywhere close to the kind of career that his father had will draft him. I, I predict that he will get picked in the later rounds, maybe round six or seven. Okay. 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 But not an undrafted free agent, right? No, I, I believe he'll get picked. Okay. Okay. Brendan Rice, son of Jerry, the GOAT, Rice. Out of USC and Arizona, he's a senior, 6'2", 208. 33-inch arms, 9 and 5 8 inch hands. He has a prospect grade of 6.10. Good backup with potential to develop into a starter is what that grade says. He has a 71 production score, a 71 athleticism score, and a total score of 74, which put him 24th among wide receivers coming out of the combine. And I will say this much about him. He's been interviewed two or three times that I've seen. So well-spoken, so mature, it is, it's almost scary. I mean, you know, how, how, how uh, and, and I said, before I even said it to Crystal, she, my wife, she's watching and she said the same thing. So very impressive young man. I'm sure he's going to impress somebody. What do you think about him? I will kind of agree with his score, that 6.1 number for him. Uh, where does that put him? Good backup with the potential to develop into a starter. Yeah. I believe, I believe he's good enough to at least achieve that. 
if not do better. Uh, I also believe that he will get drafted probably in the later rounds. I'm going to predict, predict round five or six. Um, but he's more probably going to end up being a slot guy, maybe a wide receiver too, you know what I mean? Not the main guy on the team, but he'll be on somebody's team somewhere. All right, we'll keep an eye out for him. I'll be rooting for him, son of a Niner. By the way, by the way, he transferred out of Colorado right before Prime got there. Did he really? <laughs> did, did he know Prime was coming and he rolled on? I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the story I heard was the that um, what's his face, uh, the head coach of USC. Uh, I can't remember his doggone name. He coached, he coached Baker, he coached uh Kyle Murray, Kyler Murray, he coached, he coached a whole bunch of guys. He got him to come over. Got recruited, eh? Yeah, he, he recruited him over. Wow, nice. Well, you know, they got this, I, you would think that's a bit of a step up, right? From Colorado to USC? To USC. Well, I mean, they both play in the same conference, but if you want to talk about, yeah, I mean <laughs> USC doesn't need uh, a resurgence. Prime is in the middle of having a resurgence in Colorado. Okay. So, yeah, Colorado was down at the time. Okay. They were way down. I don't think All they right. won three games. <laughs> yeah, well, been a while. So, interesting, interesting. Brendan Rice. Drake Nugent. I keep wanting to say son of Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but he's not. He's out of Michigan, 6'1 and a half, 298. Big boy, center, 33-inch arms, 9-inch hands, has a prospect rate of 5.69, candidate for the bottom of the roster or the practice squad. He had a 58 production score, a pretty decent athleticism score of 79, and a total score of 70, which ranked him 11th. In the combine amongst centers, Drake Nugent. Now, Benny, when I looked up Drake Newton's, Nugent's father, let me tell you what I found. Terry Nugent, Terrence John Nugent, quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, played college at Colorado State Rams, was selected by the Browns in the sixth round of the 84 draft. So, not that <laughs> quarterback. Had a big son, didn't he? You got to be kidding me, man. Six, six <laughs> round quarterback that nobody ever heard of. Okay. Dang. We hey. love backup quarterbacks, don't we? <laughs> now we do. <laughs> Look, far be it from me to poo poo on an NFL player. Okay. He made an NFL squad. He's way ahead of the game. I, I I don't want to talk bad about him or cast any disparagements on an NFL player. So his dad was in the NFL. So he gets props for that. This kid, however, because he's a center, I'm going to say he gets picked in the later rounds. He's not a plug-and-play kid. He, he's not, but he can be developed and could possibly come off of somebody's practice squad and make it. He's got the size. He's got good size for a center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll out help if he can play guard, too. Out of Michigan. I, I, that's another plus. Senior. You know, I don't know if he was a four-year starter, but, you know, we know we like those guys with experience like that. More years, the better. All right. Jalen Harrell, edge rusher, senior, 6'4", 33 and a quarter inch arms, 9 and 3 quarter inch hands, has a 5.86 prospect grade average backup or special teamer. Production score is low, 59. Athleticism score is nice, 76. Ranked him ninth in the combine amongst edge rushers with a total score of 66, and I put him at 17th. So, Jalen Harrell, when I looked into his background, his dad was James Harrell, linebacker in the NFL and in the USFL for nine seasons during the 70s, played college at the University of Florida, 
play for the Lions and the Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Bandits of the USFL. So, linebacker. So he was born what? Uh, we're uh, I'm 54. He's born 57. So he's he's six 66 years old. Yeah. So uh, that's Mr. Jalen Harrell coming in. Jonah Ellis. 5.99, he's a special teamer, average guy. Had a 76 production grade, which is pretty decent. 69 athleticism and a total score. He is an edge rusher out of Utah. 6'2", 248, 33 inch arms. Mr. Ellis is related to Luther Ellis, a defensive tackle for 10 seasons. Played college for the Utah Utes, was selected in the first round of the 1995 NFL Draft, played for the Carolina Broncos. Broncos, okay. Was a two-time pro bowler, defensive line coach at Idaho, till being named defensive tackle coach at Utah. So, that Late round pick. Yeah, not, not bad at all. Not bad at all, for sure. Sure. Well, I mean, first of all, edge rusher is a position that everybody needs. You can't, you can't have too many good edge rushers. For his size, though, he's going to have to have some some special talent if he's going to get run because he's a little he's a little light in pants. But other than that, he'll probably go late, sixth, seventh round, maybe. Okay. Okay. Hey, look, everybody be happy, you know. Once you get in, Javon Foster, offensive tackle out of Missouri. Grew up in Michigan, also a senior. 6'5", 313. 34.58 inch arms, 9.58 inch hands. Has a 6.18 prospect grade, Benny. Javon Foster. Good backup with the potential to develop into a starter. A low production grade, 66. I was a little surprised at that, but a high athleticism score, 77. Total score of 73. Javon Foster, did you have any intel on him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, most of these dudes is just making it. Well, his dad is Jerome Foster, former football defensive end and tackle for the Oilers, the Dolphins, and the Jets. So Jerome had a bit of a and a bit of a career, his dad did, you know? Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's take a quick look at the next person. Javon Foster. What do you think about Javon? You think he's gonna go a little higher? He might be what, third, fourth round? That's a good possibility. Uh, if Mr. Zerline thinks he has a chance uh, to possibly be a starter, then uh, I'm not going to go against that. I'm thinking third or fourth round, possibly. He's got the size. I don't know about athleticism. These 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 guys, unfortunately, not that I'm anybody special, but they didn't warrant me spending much time looking at their tape. <laughs> So I, I can't really say. I can only go by what I see here. Okay. But he's got good size. If he's got some good pass rush moves or he's really good against the run. He's a D tackle, right? Yes. Yeah, if he's a good run stopper. O tackle. He, offensive. Oh, he's an offensive tackle. What's his size again? I can't see. It's too small. Six five and a half. Three thirteen. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's got good size. So, like I said before when I did my mock draft. Usually these guys, when they come out of college, these linemen excel at one particular thing. It's the rare few that will be the high draft picks that excel at pass blocking and run blocking or pass rushing and run stopping. Not everybody can do both, but they usually can do one really well. So if he does one really well, he can be coached up to do the other one better. Like I said, he's got the size. 
And no six one of... eight is not is is a pretty good score. I mean, once you get above six, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying I, that's why I'm saying he, I believe he'll get drafted. Okay, okay. So, but he's not he's not a day one guy. He, he ain't round one, round two at all. Luke McCaffrey. Luke has a prospect grade of five point nine six, average backup or special teamer. Coming out of Rice, 6'2", 198, 30 and an eighth inch arms, nine and five eight inch hands. Decent production scores 73. Athleticism scored decent. Total scores 75. I was a little surprised. Now, Zerline does this. You can always find this on NFL.com. We'll give you all the pros and cons. So, and if I remember correctly, when they did the, the 40 yard dash, you know how they superimposed those guys? I think he actually beat his brother in he the did. Four dash. Yeah, yeah. Ran a four uh, four six. Okay, there you go. There you go. So where do you think he's gonna go? Four four six, 36 inch vertical. This is what impresses me. Last year, he caught 71 passes for 992 yards. That's big time production for a college receiver. Okay. Big time. Now, if that translates to his professional career, he will be all right. He plays the slot mostly. He's not a really big guy. Oh, no, nah, I'm sorry. 6'2", 194 is good, it's good size, 198, whatever he is. 98. Everywhere yeah. you, wherever you look, this, the, the, the heights and the weights are always different. 6'2", 200, might as well say. Yeah, you might as well say. So that's actually not bad size. Uh, and four four six is pretty good straight line speed. It's going to come down to his route running, how he gets in and out of his breaks. Can he fight through press coverage and stuff like that? But if he can do those things, he may have himself a nice little career. All right. I definitely see him getting drafted again, third, maybe fourth round. Okay. 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 And wrong with that. And, uh, and Benny, that wraps it up. For the juniors, the sons of former NFL players. You missed one. Who did I miss? Tariq Owens. I don't think, did Tariq go to the combine? No, he did not. That's why I missed him, because he he had no combine score. He wasn't like Marvin Harrison. Where okay. The difference. But tell me about Tariq. Well, Tariq went to Missouri State. Um. And he did not go to the combine. In fact, he was not invited to the combine. However, he was able to put himself in at the University of Missouri's Pro Day. They allowed him to come in and, and work out for scouts. And he did that. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, ran a 4'5", 140, 38 and a half inch vertical. Not bad. Yeah, but this is bad. Four, five, first of all, 4'5", is okay. But he ain't no speedster. No. That's all right, though. But last year, in his last college season, he only caught 28 passes for 528 yards and four touchdowns. So he was not very productive. Now, that doesn't mean he won't make it. But I think he, if he gets in with a team, which I'm sure he will just because of his name, he'll probably have to do it as an undrafted free agent, and then he'll have to work his way up. And hey, anything is possible. Anything, anything. You know, anything. Again, these guys had the bloodlines. I want to take, you know, yeah. take a look at them. He just didn't put enough. He just didn't put enough on tape to make people really. But people did show up to watch his pro day. Okay. Okay. So, you know. And so he had some interest. Yep. Some interest out there. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Benny. Well, we're going to move next to our social media page. All right. So we're going to start out on the social media page. This was an interesting article, Then I didn't see this anywhere else but this one particular report where he was fired from his first coaching job. We're talking about Colin Kaepernick here. This is Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He got fired? Was it high school? Look, 
I think when he tried to make them kneel for the uh, national anthem. <laughs> Stop, man! Stop. That was the last straw. That's not funny. Listen, that was the last straw. It's like you guys. That's not funny. <laughs> Boo! And you know, I used to call him CK and the Capper Kids because he was young and the Niners were young, and it was a whole time and a whole thing, you know. Uh, but I was like, Jamie Christmas, bro. He had a coaching job and he got fired. What happened? Uh, again. The kids couldn't stand him. He was, he, you know. The Why? Kids, the kids didn't like him. And like I said, he, at some particular point, he tried to get them all to kneel and et cetera. Well, no, let's, stop that. Let's take a quick look. Since you're asking a question and, and you really want to know why. Yeah, I want to know why. All right. They, they say they took the job quietly so he could stay tethered to football. Quote, the kids couldn't stand him. He just had a way of pissing people off. So there you go, Benny. Huh? Is this high school? Uh, yes. Joseph Barron Senior High School in Des Moines, Iowa. First of all, what the hell is he doing in Des Moines, Iowa? <laughs> oh, plus they went 0-6 <laughs> at one point. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> well, he probably was cussing them out. So oh that's why they couldn't God. stand it. Oh, Jamie Christmas. Never mind, man. This this guy <laughs> can't get right. You had to ask the question, didn't you? Well, yeah, I wanted to know. <laughs> okay, if you, if you get fired from a high school coaching job, the only other job you're ever going to be able to get in coaching is possibly another high school coaching job. So if he was thinking about trying to work himself up through the ranks, he's off to a really bad start. Got a point there. Got a point there. We'll keep an eye out for the Colin, Ka Colin Kaepernick coaching career. Ugh. The five best NFL stars who also played in the NCAA tournament, Benny. I bet you could name these guys right off the top of your head, can't you? Um... I think Tony Gonzalez probably played. One. I would bet Antonio Gates played. Two. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I'm having trouble. Pressure. Let's take a quick look here. Um, uh, Jimmy quarterback Graham. Florida State. Jimmy Graham. Okay, Jimmy Graham played. It's a lot of tight ends. Donovan McNabb. Uh, yes, Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. You said it's no great gates. Julius Peppers. North Carolina. No, I, I know these. I know them. I just can't. <laughs> yes, I, I, I know tough. all these guys. Yeah, I, that I was, definitely that was know pretty tough to try to pull that up, you know, right off the right off the top of your head. But uh, you know, I was like, man, some of these guys you forget, you know, like Julius Peppers, that I wouldn't have got that one. They were all power forwards. Right. Except for Donovan. Donovan was a point guard, believe it or not. Was he really? Yes. Wow. Donovan was a point guard. Now that's I'm surprised to hear that. When he when he passed everybody the ball, did they have to dive on the floor to get it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You couldn't resist that one, could you? You can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Could not help it. According to a report, NFL Insider, Giants are interested in both LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy. Since they have come to realize that only McCarthy will potentially be available to number six overall pick. What do you think about that? Okay, so this has been a real hot top really? all week long. Probably started over the weekend or the end of last week. And it's all attached to this meteoric rise of J.J. McCarthy. J. J. McCarthy, I know. And we talked about last week how some guys' names, you get beat over the head with this guy's name every single day going up. And then certain other guys seem to have disappeared. Like nobody's talking about Michael Penix at all. Mm. I haven't heard his name on Mary a sports program lately. 
But J.J. McCarthy is getting attached to everybody. In fact, what was that guy's name? He's on ESPN. Mike Tannenbaum, who actually used to be a real GM for somebody. I forget who. Oh, he was GM for the Jets back some years back. So now he's an insider guy on ESPN. He says, let me see if I can get this right now. He says, Patriots are picking third, Cardinals are picking fourth. So in my mock, I had the Cardinals taking Marvin Harrison, right? He says they're going to take J.J. McCarthy, trade him to the Vikings, and then trade, and then, wait, I'm sorry. No, they're going to trade Kyler Murray to the Vikings. That's what it is. They're going Kyler to Kyler Murray to the Vikings? Yes. They're going to if they trade Kyler Murray to the Vikings and they take JJ McCarthy, first of all, they they save a ton of money. They also get a guy that's 5 years younger. And the Vikings save a ton of money off of what they were paying Kirk Cousins even though he's gone now. That's that's a bunch of money that they're going to save. But they're going to pick Murray. up. Pick up. Kyler Murray makes way less than what they were paying Kirk Cousins. Really, way less. Way less, eh? Well, and he, Kirk was up there with the with the and he's, all-time and he's, legends. And he's six years younger. So both teams save money and pick up youth at the quarterback position. Completely different type of quarterback, though, too, with Cousins. But he plays pretty decent from the pocket for uh, I mean, if if you were going into the season with Sam Darnold as your starter and somebody offered you Kyler Murray, would you would you think about it? Yeah, I would take it. Maybe like, yeah. Okay, there you go. Now, of course, this is all speculation. And I know we started off here talking about the Giants. So the Giants are thrown into this pick. So evidently, word on the street is that the Giants had J.J. McCarthy come in. They interviewed him. They interviewed a, a few different guys. But they seem to really like him. They have the sixth pick overall. The question is, there's such an uproar about McCarthy that they can't just sit tight and think he'll fall to them at number six. So if they really, really want him, they may have to make some kind of a move. Now, whether or not they're willing to do that, that's the big question. And the team you're going to want to talk to is the Cardinals, who pick fourth. So... Again, this is all speculation, but supposedly the owners have given the GM the green light on going after the quarterback if, in fact, they want to do that. So I'm telling you, these guys are not married to Daniel Jones, man. And the money, we're not worried about the money because he's got some kind of clauses or something. They can get out of that money. They can can get out of that contract in a year. Oh, really? Yeah, so whether he starts or not, they'll have to pay him this year. But they ain't got to keep him longer than that. Okay. Okay. So if the, to me, if you're going to make the move, you got to do it now. Because there's no telling when there's going to be a quarterback class like this in the near future. And they don't have a lot of time to wait around. So, you know, if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. I'm not 100% sold on JJ McCarthy, but all of a sudden, everybody loves this. Everybody loves this guy. And I think what it is, is he's, he's, first of all, he killed the combine. He killed his pro day. And he's killing in all of his interviews. He's really smart. He really knows offense. He's a great leader. Harbaugh's talking him up like crazy. So much so that somebody said, well, if Harbaugh loves this kid so much, why doesn't he trade uh, – What's his face? Yeah. His quarterback. Herbert. With the yeah, Herbert. And you take JJ McCarthy and they're like, nah, he ain't gonna do that. He loves the kid, but he don't love him that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this this that's kind of crazy. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right. Well, I'll think about it some more. When I do my mock draft 2.0, it's a good possibility. I will change the Giants pick. <laughs> okay. Looking for that 2.0. Now, Benny, you, don't you love the stories 
This guy hasn't even gone to the NFL yet, but his his uh, got his NIL money. His NIL money was enough that he could buy his mother a home. That's beautiful. I think he's got he's at about two and a half mil in NIL. So that's just a beautiful thing, and this is. I have this because how many? This is new. This is with because of the NIL. This could never have happened before because they were all broke college students at one point, you know. Right now they got more money, more money, more money, and it's really changing the dynamic here. So congratulations uh, on that, man. I you just just love these stories, you know, Travis Hunter, and also I think he's healthy now. Right. Oh yeah, he's good. He's good to and go. Come back and, and do some damage, you know. Shaq Barrett decides to go to the Dolphins instead of the Jets, <laughs> right in the same division. So well, the Jet, the Jets didn't get, they didn't get what. If you want to get a free agent, you got to let this guy know you really want it. You can't. And and the thing is, the Jets went after him first. The Jets made him a contract offer, and in the dead of night, the Dolphins swooped in and stole it. <laughs> so now, you know, I don't – first, number one, they probably offered him more money. Number two, he doesn't have to leave Florida. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, Florida is a weird place, man. I mean, a lot of tax advantages. I was going to say they have a lot of tax advantages. Down a lot there. of tax advantages. Now, they got a crazy – uh, governor, you know. Yeah, he's an idiot. But you know, if we could get if they could get rid of him, I'd actually think about going to Florida. <laughs> but uh, so I just thought it was interesting in the same division. So that should be interesting dynamic. A little. Well, it it always stings when uh, you're looking into the free agent market and you're trying to fill a need, and you go after a guy that you're pretty sure is really going to help you. And somebody in your division steals them away. I'm sure there was other teams looking at Saquon Barkley, but the Eagles snatched him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's got to sting the Giants a little bit that he's still in the division and is going to be playing them twice a year. They're, they're not going to be happy about that. That's what well, really did, hurt. Didn't your owner say something about he was heartbroken or something? Ah, that's I don't want to hear that crap. <laughs> you're not heartbroken. If you're that heartbroken, you would have paid him. You'd have paid him. And, you could, and you could have paid him less than the Eagles gave him and kept him. Really? He, he wanted to stay. He's now like the second or third highest paid running back. Okay. They didn't have they didn't even have to give him if they had given him a million or two less last year instead of tagging him and gave him three years, he'd have stayed. But that's what he really wanted was a little more time. Right. He wanted he wanted okay. uh, long term. You know, long term in, in, in football is not long. Especially long -term running back. Three, running back and get three years, they're doing pretty good. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they're doing pretty good. So we talked a little bit about the um changes in the rules, Benny. Oh, that's, uh that's crazy. <laughs> I just I I want to I wanted to get deep into these rules, and maybe I'll I'll really really get into them really deep. Did you did you get deep into these things? I didn't like, like the, to get deep into them. No, the only two rules I really really was concerned about is the kickoff rule, right? Which we've seen that in action because the XFL uses it, right? And they're saying theirs is very similar, but not a hundred percent the same. And the hip drop rule, which I, I'll tell you, people are going nuts over this hip drop rule. I'm telling you, they got used to ho not horse collaring. They're getting used to not going head to head. They'll get used to hip dropping too. It, But this one's going to hurt. It's going to hurt defenses. It's definitely going to hurt defenses. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have to get, get these guys some training, you know, showing them how to do this without that hip drop piece, you know. Somebody said that that's what happened to Bo Jackson. It was a hip drop tackle. Mm, it wasn't a classic hip drop. So a classic hip drop is when you get a hold of the receipt of the ball carrier, usually in his upper body. 
And then you, as they call it, unweight yourself. So you twist a little bit and just drop your body. You just fall to the ground. And what ends up happening is you roll up on the back of the ball carrier's legs because you're holding on to him. Your weight is pulling down on him. He can't move his feet. He can't pick his feet up. So he's anchored. And the momentum of the direction you're going in takes you into the back of his legs. I think Bo Jackson was trying to run out, if I remember correctly. Guy had a hold of his leg, and he tried to run out of it. And the guy had him wrapped too well, and he sheared his hip. He sheared the, the, the ligaments away from the bone. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was ugly. It was ugly. Well, we'll keep an eye on that um, to uh, to see how these things go. But you can always come and read a little bit more about it at Ben and Barry on football. It's almost that time. It's almost time for the UFL. They've got their uniforms out now. That looks a little weird to me, though. <laughs> well, it's the helmet. It's the half and half helmet. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's a great uniform. I okay. love that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about that helmet. Yeah, they're half and half helmets. Now, when you look up, you know, some you you want to see a color. You know, if nothing else, right. you want to see a color. And you know, a guy, the other team got a blue or a white. Now you know <laughs> what team is that guy? What team is this guy? But in any event, what is it? The 31st, I believe, um, March 30th, 31st. Um, it's this weekend. Yeah, coming up this weekend. So it should be interesting. And and you were right. I think you mentioned where they were going to have the champion of the XFL play the champion of the USFL or something like that. So we'll keep an eye. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the week progresses. We talked about two games on Christmas, Benny. Two games on Christmas. It used to be one game on Christmas, right? If we got that, yeah. Is Chris, I think – they were saying like Christmas traditionally belongs to basketball. Right. <laughs> they 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 play basketball all day long. It's an early game, afternoon game, and a late game. Well, we'll be watching football and we'll have the basketball on one of the side things. Then. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's, there's no question about it. I'm, no I'm watching football. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Something to do. Well, we talked a little bit about your mock draft, and they were saying that potentially four quarterbacks could go in the top four picks. Now, because of that J.J. McCarthy conversation. That He's the fourth guy. Up there. He's that fourth guy. He's the fourth guy. Yeah. Everybody always uh, was already predicting Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. J.J. McCarthy is upsetting the apple cart right now, man. He's got everybody scrambling, trying to decide what they should do. And I know there's several teams out there that are interested in him and they're just trying to figure out how they're going to maneuver to get this guy. I'm telling you, if this guy doesn't pan out, it's going to be bad man, because he's wreaking havoc. He's wreaking havoc with these war rooms trying to decide how we're going to maneuver our draft strategy and we need a quarterback. And this guy just came from out of nowhere from a college team that won a national championship by running the ball. By running. Yeah, that's what everybody keeps saying. He, they, he did, was it the, they did the same thing the Patriots did when they played the, uh, the Bills. With Mac Jones. Yeah. That's, it's, that's what scares That's what scares me. Is this guy going to be – but the thing is, although he didn't throw the ball a lot, when he did throw it, he threw it extremely well. Okay. He threw it extremely well in games and at the combine, and he blew everybody away at his pro day. So. J.J. McCarthy, number four. Well, Ben, you know what that means. Thanks for following. Please leave comments and suggestions. Our hashtag is football is life. Our website is www.ben and Barry on football. Please leave your comments. Please tap the notification bell and the uh, and the like button and all that kind of good stuff. And Benny, do you have any last comments 
What concerns? Yeah, it's getting close to Joel Embiid coming back, man. Go Sixers. <laughs> Prayers. I heard he's in the gym. He's just he's is just he, not is he in the gym. To come back to the Sixers, or is he getting ready for international competition? What? That's what they keep. I've I've heard them saying, bro. That's that's a pipe dream right now. <laughs> okay, that's a pipe dream right now. You can't even think about that. You got to come back to the Sixers, bro. If we're in the play-in, we have to have him. If we're not in the play-in, we might be able to squeeze a couple of games out in a series and then get him back. But we need him back. I have to give Maxi some kudos. He's a star of the team. But he went from having a really, like, a bad game. I think he had six points or something like that. A few oh, yeah, he did have a stinker. He had one stinker. He had a stinker, and he, he just came right back from it, man. You know what I mean? And, and really showed his leadership, showed his resilience. You know, I always liked Maxie, you know, anyway. But, uh, you know, that's something you like to see. You know what I mean? That Absolutely. As a pro, he can do that. So, congratulations for that. Okay, well, you and your sixes, my bulls, I ain't worried about my bulls. We ain't, we ain't making too much noise. No, nah, they ain't going nowhere. Anybody. But... They had one guy who they were showing he was slamming on people <laughs> left and right. So I got to tune in a little bit more on my squad and see what they're doing. All right, Benny. That's it for me. That's it for me. Peace out. Peace out, y'all.